Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Welcome back to the Revert Show, right on YouTube and podcasts all over the podcast platforms. Alhamdulillah. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, today, our guest host, or our guest, uh, yeah, host, he's going to be with us more than one show, inshallah. Hosting this show, we're going to have more. Um, brothers with us on this show uh, regarding this specific topic which is a very uh, big topic and a very important topic in our lives uh, brother uh, Farid from Dalilo you guys have heard uh, of him before and we met him here on this show and this channel before alhamdulillah khair. we can get we're gonna introduce him right now one more time and uh, inshallah, go on with the show right away. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh, brother Farid. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh to you and every Ubambi who is watching us tonight. Hayyak Allah, hayyak Allah. Uh, brother Farid, we picked this topic specifically because as we know that we, uh, as a Muslim ummah, one of the main things that is uh, that stands out is how united uh, the Muslim Ummah is and how we should be. And uh, why we brought this topic, why having you on, and uh, as we always mentioned, uh, the uh, app, Dalilo, that you are responsible for, mashallah. Uh, SubhanAllah, this all clicks together. So first of all, we're going to start by introducing yourself to everybody and um, kind of link it with Dalilo as well. Uh, that way uh, we know who you are. And again, the Manasik as well that, you know, we, we had you on Manasik before are um, tied with the Manasik uh, Hajj services that we had before. So, tafadla, zakala khair. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah. I will try to sum up, inshallah, the whole topic uh, about the Lilo. Uh, within a few minutes. Basically, a while back, it was a bunch of us uh, engineers. We decided that, mashallah, the community, the Muslim community in the United States, uh, the numbers vary. Some say 4 million, some say 6 million, some say 7 million. But what doesn't vary really is that, alhamdulillah, the Muslim community is one of the most affluent communities in the United States. We have, mashallah, plenty of doctors, plenty of engineers, plenty of accountants, attorneys, uh, businessmen, mashallah, and many resources estimate the Muslim community income varies between 120 and 150 billion dollars a year. So subhanallah, we have so much, yet we have so little. And the beauty about Islam is it brings us all together. So we were thinking like, you know what? With that many community members and that much income, we should have some kind of an economic network that will tie us together, make us stronger, so we can have, inshallah, take care of our needs and, and uh, uh, affairs and to handle it in a better fashion. So we decided to establish a mobile app called Delilo. Before Delilo, we used to print a national directory called the business directory. We used to print 110,000 copies out of it, distribute it nationwide. We had about 22 different covers and six local sections. But then a few years ago, as I said, we decided to go mobile. So we looked into what does the Muslim community need? The Muslim community needs number one, to establish prayers so uh, and nowhere to pray. So we have Alhamdulillah over 1300 massage in, in our mobile app. And uh, we're trying to work on Iqama times where every masjid will update their Iqama times so the Muslim would know where to pray and never miss uh, a congregational prayer, whatever he is. That's number one. What does a Muslim also need? A Muslim also need to find out businesses that cater to him. Uh, halal restaurants, places where they can buy their groceries. They need to support, for example, a Muslim mechanic, a Muslim electrician, a Muslim accountant. For the, for the sisters, they can find female physicians, female dentists. Uh, some sisters need physical therapy, so they can find out where the females uh, within the community that do that kind of services. And for example, at the same time, uh, let's say a brother opened a brand new restaurant and he needs the community to know about it. Delila would be the place where they can promote and market their businesses, 
so we can help their business grow. And what else does the community need? So recently we developed a feature called uh, community project. But before I get into community project, we thought our community, or we know that our community travels a lot because we used to travel a lot to meet Muslim uh, businesses and as well organizations so they can promote themselves within our directory. So we felt as a Muslim, when I travel, I need to know where to stop and a place to eat. And uh, so we created something called a feature called the trip planner. So within the trip planner itself, uh, it detects where your location is. You tell it where you're going to. And along the way, you say, oh, I'd like to stop by a masjid to pray and a restaurant to eat. And the trip planner will plot your route and then it will tell you where it is along your way. And which way you never lost. You never, you know, you feel, oh my God, I don't know how far the masjid is from here or is there a place to eat. And alhamdulillah, we try to verify our addresses uh, quite often. So we try to keep the application up to date as much as possible. About nine months ago, we felt that one of the things our community go through and suffers and consume its resources is when we try to build our masajid schools or, or acquire land for our cemeteries. So we thought, why don't we establish a feature within the Lilo that would help or focus strictly on community projects. So Alhamdulillah, we made this feature and we launched it back in July. And uh, now everything is going virtual because of COVID. So we decided to do the first ever fundraiser in the United States under the title Stronger Together. So we can help 11 community projects to be built in the United States. And Mashallah. in a nutshell, that's the story of the, you know. MashaAllah, I mean, yeah. Amazing. Tfadda, if you have something else you want to add. And that fundraiser, inshallah, will take place on December 19th from 6 to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. And mashallah, we have a wide variety of imams and shiuch joining us. Sheikh Yusuf Estes, uh, Dr. Aftab Hussain, uh, Imam Azhar Subidar, Sheikh Muhammad Faqih, Sheikh Yasser Fazaka, Sheikh Kamal Makki, Sheikh Abdul Bari Yahya, and uh, mashallah, and of course, uh, Sheikh uh, Mustafa Kifah from Chicago. And uh, so we have plenty, mashallah, of mashayikh joining on that fundraising event. And inshallah, it will be very educational uh, evening and inshallah, very spiritually uplifting to show solidarity of Muslim community together in the United States. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. And definitely we'll be bro broadcasting more information about this inshallah. as the time uh, gets uh, closer to it, inshallah. So, subhanAllah, as we uh, uh, mentioned this, uh, the title of this uh, uh, maybe series of episodes that will be coming up, inshallah, uh, as this ummah needs to be united. One of the, the ways that this ummah is united, subhanAllah, is at the masajid and the nonprofit organization, the uh, organizations and um, uh, schools and just getting together as Muslims uh, all together brings us to, uh, as, as one ummah. Now, we really would like to kind of jump in the, uh, uh, the talk about how the ummah is united today, but how could we make it even stronger in the unity um may, you know bring people closer um as you see there's a lot of masajid we still can use more masajid because you mentioned mashallah there's so many muslims here in america um in comparison with let's say 20 years ago or even you know mashallah you've been here in america all your life so and uh, you know you've experienced and you've gone to do so many different cities as uh, you know, you've been doing a lot of traveling, mashallah. So you've seen the cities that has the masajid and you've seen the cities that progressed from one masjid to two masajid to maybe 10 masajid. As here in, in Dearborn area, mashallah, we have numbers of masajid. We're talking about the uh, my my five uh, uh, mile radius. I probably have more than 10 masajid, Allahumma mm barish. -hmm. So, being united is something that we uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has talked about in the Quran plenty of times and the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi talked about plenty of times. How do you see the unity of of the Muslims nowadays here in America from your perspective and from your 
mashallah experience in this in this country before i answer this question you mentioned about the masajid sometimes you don't know what it is the blessing that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed upon you until you go through that experience i used to travel a lot in my young days when uh, this beard was all black and <laughs> I used to stop by so many masajid. I'll go in, make wudu, go in and pray and sit down. Sometimes, you know, put my back against the wall and close my eyes just to rest a little bit before I continue with my travel. And subhanAllah, not once, and I've traveled, and I mean I really traveled. For those, some of the brothers who watch this and they know me, uh, they've, I've been to Washington, Oregon, California, Arizona, Colorado, Texas, uh, uh, Georgia, I've been to North Carolina, South Carolina, and, you know, you name it. I've probably been about 30 states and not once did someone stop me and say, excuse me, what are you doing here? Or excuse me, you look like a stranger. You can't come into our masjid. Or excuse Allah. me, you can't rest in the masjid. So it always made me feel that subhanAllah, that it's true. These are the houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So regardless yeah. where you as a Muslim would go in to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't matter where you're from, how you look, or stranger or not. And that always made me feel, subhanAllah, so great inside that I belong to a great thing, which yes, is sir. the religion of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's why it is so important to me that we need to work on these projects, the houses of Allah, because you don't know where you're going to be traveling to. Or I used to live in the Northwest in Portland, and then I moved to Dallas about 10, uh, 10 years ago. And SubhanAllah, and you, when you say about building a masajid, uh, when I moved from, uh, actually it was in 07, 13 years ago, we lived in a musalla. I mean, we, we used to pray in a musalla. And then that yes. musalla became the largest, perhaps, Islamic center in North Texas, which is called East Plano Islamic Center, EPIC. And so and then I moved from Epic to another city further north, and we started in a small musalla about eighty families. Now, mashallah, we have two jumas and we have about four hundred plus people that pray in that musalla, and now we're expanding into a masjid. So wherever Subhanallah, you establish a place of worship, Muslims come to it, and Muslims yes. dwell those places, and those places will become bigger and bigger. And there is a need to build bigger masajid, subhanAllah. And that just feeling of unity is really so great. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to keep blessing us and doing so and growing. And what's really Amen. just as important as building those masajid is for the hearts to be coming closer together. And that what would sustain the survivability of these masajid and the growth of our community. You know, we can always talk the talk about as, you know, what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran and what the Prophet والسلام, told us in so many ahadith and what we learn from his seerah and the behavior of the Sahaba. As long as, at, until we walk the walk, it doesn't matter how much we talk. We talk. Mm -hmm. So as, that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stresses in the Quran a lot that the actions of what we are doing is what really matters the most. Until we as a community learn to practice what we preach, when we talk about unity, we need to practice mm -hmm. that unity. When we say, when we talk about forgiveness, we need to practice that forgiveness. When we talk that Allah loves al muhsineen we need to practice to ihsan with one another. When we, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about those that commit naked, put the benefit or the, the goodness of others or the well-being of others before themselves, we need to practice that. And so until we start doing that, it's going to be extremely difficult for us as Muslims, not just in the United States, but all over the world, to really be united and be together. And that's, that's why correct. it's so important, subhanAllah, to just remember that our actions matters a lot more than our words and i think yep. that inshallah will help our community a lot inshallah that's, that's absolutely correct and uh khair for coming up with uh with the idea of the 
community project, which is definitely uh, needed in our um, in our communities all over this country and even all over the world. Alhamdulillah, um, it helps out. Uh, it brings uh, you know the communities together, uh, where you don't feel like there's competition between the communities. Sometimes I don't know if you ever feel that. I'll be honest with you, I feel that sometimes in different masajid, um, especially when it comes to fundraisings and stuff like that. And specifically, I'll be honest with you, this is something that really ticks me off every Eid, especially when we have uh, a nice sunny day for Eid. I'm like, why don't we all pray together in the same field? Bring all brothers together. We used to do that back in New York City. I used to live in New York for a little bit. And we used to do that, mashallah. A few masajid will come together. And they pray in the same park, and it would be very nice. But one thing that I started realizing that some of the masajid they don't like that because they say, you know what, what's gonna happen with the donations? Who's gonna collect the donations? Is it gonna be this masjid? Is it gonna be that masjid? Who got more people coming? Who's got more efforts in? And it becomes such a uh, such a competition that um, a lot of masajid don't like to do that anymore. So that's something that honestly ticks me off a lot and i don't know what you have to say about that tell me <laughs> i always wondered where your accent was coming from now i know you love new york <laughs> brooklyn baby <laughs> <laughs> subhanallah as muslims there's always one thing that should there actually there should always be one thing we keep, we need to keep in mind what is it that i need to do to please allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive my sin and enter me Jannah. Amen. That's what should be our focus. What can we do? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive our sins and be pleased with us and bestow his mercy upon us and enter us Jannah. And the way for this to happen is to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in the day of judgment we'll be asked two things. Why and how? Why did you do it and how did you do it? Did you do it purely for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And mm -hmm. did you do it according to the hadith, the teachings of Muhammad alayhi salatu wa salam? Yes, that's so important. to me, the reason we came up with this idea is, you know what, instead of every masjid suffering, let us make one fundraising. Today, alhamdulillah, because it's our first fundraiser, we're doing it for 11 masajid. Mashallah. Tomorrow, maybe we'll do it for 30 masjids. Yes. The day after, maybe we'll do it for 50 masjid. The day after, for 100 masjid. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. Because the Prophet وسلم, said, Man bana uh -huh. Whoever builds a house of Allah. Mm -hmm. It did not say what part of the planet this house is in. It did not say how big that house is. Actually, it says, Even if it was a house as small as of a bird. Allah okay? Allah. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will build a house for that person in Jannah. And we felt it really doesn't matter what masjid it is. It doesn't matter how much the masjid is looking for. It doesn't matter what kind of, you know, shape that masjid is. Is it a, a large masjid? Is it a small masjid? Is it a church that was bought or a location that was bought and need uh -huh. to be paid? What matters is it is a house of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, when you're looking at who you're serving, it doesn't matter what the, the suffering or the process in between. It's like you are trying to serve Allah Azza wa Jal. Yes, it is annoying and we are seeing that a lot or a little bit. Some masajid don't like the idea, well, why should I help raise money for another masjid when right. we need to... Habibi, dear beloved, it doesn't matter which masjid you serve. Again, you're serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And today, you're serving this masjid. Tomorrow, you could need help. And this masjid will reciprocate and help you back. I remember in, uh, in, one, in the seerah in one of the battles. Well, actually, before that, we all know when the uh, muhajireen went to Medina, what did the Ansar do? The Ansar shared the muhajireen half of what they have. Exactly. You can have her. They shared their money. They shared their wealth, they shared their property, they shared everything, and they gave them even though they were in need as well. 
And also in one of the battles, when the uh, Sahaba came after the battle to attend to the needs to give water to the injured Sahaba, mm -hmm. they were asking them, no, go give water to the next that one. person, the next one, and the next one. And by the time the circle came all around, this person has this person had passed away, and this person and that person. Mm -hmm. So they knew the meaning of brotherhood, but they implemented it in their life. That's why I said in the beginning, we need to walk the talk, not just talk the talk. We all right. know what our religion commands us to do and what is expected of us. And mm -hmm. that's what I think really we need to keep in mind. If we manage to do that, I think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will support us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bless us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us the means to prosper and succeed and flourish and become a stronger community. That is absolutely correct. Alhamdulillah, Zakhullah khair. And mashallah, you, you guys are doing 11 masajid in this in this first conference. Yes. That's major. Allah mubarak. I mean, that's uh, uh, that's uh, amazing. That's amazing. And all 11 are in, from different cities and different states. Are they all from the same place? or Washington, Oregon, Arizona, Texas, Florida. Uh, mashallah, Mas East Coast, West Coast, South, Arkansas, and North. We, Everywhere. it doesn't matter. It's Allah, of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yes. And our mission is to help build the houses of Allah. Azza wa Jalla. So what's the process? So let's say I donated a hundred dollars. The hundred dollars will be distributed amongst the masajid. Among the 11 projects. Now, Mashallah. there are some projects that need more money than others. There you so go. let's say there is a project that needs $70,000, but there right. is a project that needs $3 million. Uh -huh. If the, let's say Allah blessed us and we collected more than each share will be 100,000. We give the masjid the 70, then we take the 30 and we distribute it among the other 10 masajid. So, so depending if, on the need of the masjid, I absolutely. guess. Absolutely, yes. Okay, and you got yes. priorities, of course. Yes. Something maybe, is, yeah. Yeah, the objective is for the masjid to meet their needs and we uh -huh. will move, move forward inshallah. Mashallah, that's amazing, man. Well, that's that's needed. That's needed. Wallahi. And this this project should not stop at eleven masajid. Inshallah, this should this should be at all the masajid in this country, where everybody as one ummah come together, put their money together, and let's find the masjid that's in need of this money, and let's put it in the right place, because there's a lot of places where there might be some people playing around. And not putting in the right place, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that and keep those people away from the uh, the, the ummah or the money of the uh, of the ummah at least, um, so that the, the money goes to the right place at the right time. Also, we don't want it to be delayed, we don't want it to go to something that's probably just a small expansion that doesn't make any sense to uh, instead of it going to somewhere where maybe the water about to get cut off and they're about to lose power for a couple of days or whatever, especially in the cold winter. And, you know, so many different priorities that we got to be looking at, of course. And this this is definitely something that, you know, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give you Amen. the benefit of it in this dunya and the akhirah, Amen. and to give all the masajid the benefit of it um, throughout this, mashallah, uh, effort and... Uh, you know, move, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it e easy and make it happen. And we encourage everybody, inshallah, to join this conference, obviously. Um, we encourage everybody to donate. We encourage everybody to uh, be a part of this. Regardless where you are in the world, inshallah, you can help out. You can be part of this. And everything, obviously, is uh, monitored uh, where, you know, you can't, we can't accept cash, I guess. Everything's going through uh, by credit card or PayPal or something like that, just so, make, you know, everything's um, transparent. Yeah, two things I'd like to mention. We make sure that, number one, it's either it's an expansion or a construction project, and that's what our focus is. We don't, we're not focusing on giving, uh, like, uh, expenses, uh, monthly expenses or to repair anything. It has to either be expansion or uh, construction, or let's say somebody, like we said, they bought an existing property and they want to pay for that. So mm -hmm. and that's considered under that as well. The second thing that pushed us or 
uh, made us feel the need for this. I used to live in a city, as I said, in the Northwest, and we took about eight years or more than that to build our masjid. And the price of the construction jumped from 600 some thousand to 1.2, 1.3 million dollars. Wow. And that's why it is important to help the masajid complete the projects at a faster pace. Because a lot of times you don't pay attention to inflation, cost of living increase, cost of labor, cost of material. So, right. and, and these things, when projects do not finish fast enough, the bid that you get today, you're going to pay sometimes 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, and sometimes double the, the, the amount, the dollar figure that was allocated for such a project. And it really drains the community by, you know, oh, yeah. normally the 80, 20 rule, 20% 20 of the people end up paying 80% of the bill. But mashallah, we are about seven or eight million Muslims in this country. Can you imagine if we really all pitch in? Oh man. <laughs> you know, a dollar a month. How many massages you can build a month? Or if even just a million of us pitch in 10 or $20 a month. You can build four, five, six massages a month. Oh, yeah. The thing is, we got the numbers. We just don't have the platform. Yes. I people that, even if they don't pray, and they don't go to the masjid, but subhanAllah, this ummah has so much goodness inside its heart that it yeah. doesn't mind to help support the building and expansion and acquiring of masajid. And oh, yeah. because of that, we felt that this platform and this fundraiser, inshallah, will be a Kickstarter of people wanting to do good and building houses of Allah and schools. And I really like the fact that schools are so important. You know, we build all these massages, right? But yes. Where is the generation that's going to learn? Oh, they man. have to go to that masjid. So I got a lot we, to talk about that, yeah. man. <laughs> <laughs> so if we don't have a great Islamic school system and qualified and certified teachers and you know, and schools that have a gym and track and soccer fields and, and yes. you know, teach our kids. And, and, and yes, keep them busy with something good. You, you know what I mean? So mm -hmm. schools are ex extremely important. And then we added the cemeteries of acquiring land. Because, uh -huh. you know, three stages of life. Childhood, you know, being youth. And at the end, we're all going to go. We all got to go. So yes, I want to go somewhere where I know there is a lot of you know, brothers and sisters, you know, may Allah be merciful to all our dead people and be merciful I mean, to I all mean. the living ones. So, and yeah, that's Allah. why we are really focusing on that. So I really ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to enlighten everybody's heart, to see the I vision mean. that we see and trying to help each other that our strength in numbers and we subhanAllah, you know, it doesn't matter who you are. As long as there is la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah inside your heart, that means there is a lot of goodness inside that heart, regardless. Yes, yes, and that's uh, subhanAllah, that's something that we can't uh, can't forget when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions that for us uh, by you know by means of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is that on the day of judgment, after everybody is in the Jannah, everybody in hellfire, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala still asks and tells, take out each person that has dharra, mithqalu dharra, which is um, an Adam's weight of iman, of faith in their heart, take them out of hellfire and put him in Jannah. Which means that as long as you have that the Adam weight of um, iman and faith in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you still have good in you. Because if you don't have good in you, you're not worth going into Jannah. You know, so we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring us all together um, on one word as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wanted for us as one ummah um, uh, in this life, you know, in this era, in this crazy time that we're in right now. Title, Uniting Together to Build the Houses of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. MashaAllah. December mashallah. 19th, inshallah, from 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Standard Time. But if you go to dalilo.com slash stronger together, uh, you'll find out that subhanAllah, and we made one very nice feature, which is you can with one click donate for the 11 projects. So you don't Masha have to Allah. go and donate for every single project. You just go one amount and that amount will be 
divided to distributed. To all of those Allah That's correct. Mashallah. Obviously, everything is uh, going to be in the description, inshallah. Inshallah. For you guys, just click on that um, link and go right directly to the website. And then, inshallah, the day of the fundraiser, um, we'll have this, uh, uh, you know, good thing happen, inshallah. One last thing I wanted to ask you about this community project. I don't know, maybe you mentioned this or not, but um, sometimes you have in the community uh, people who are able and capable of uh, not funding the project, but maybe help either by labor, either by supplying the needs for this project, uh, something like that, and throughout the, the nation. Is that something that you guys thinking about doing or is this something already in, in plan? We... Because of us not focusing on a particular city, and we are from North Dallas, uh, it's kind of hard for us to, if somebody comes to us and let's say, well, you know what, you're collecting money for the uh, Mesquite Islamic Center or Islamic Center of Saxe, or for example, uh, Al-Huda uh, Islamic Center Foundation out of Fishers, Indiana. And I live in Fishers, Indiana, and I would like to provide something like that. We will take the person's name and number and information and we'll connect them directly, inshallah, with the masjid. Uh, we Masha do have Allah. a fundraising team. We're working on a fundraising team. We're working with uh, Muslim architects and Muslim construction companies. Um, when we started Dalilo, our objective is to keep the dollar circulating within the community. We want our community to benefit. As mm -hmm. Like I said before, alhamdulillah, we have plenty of doctors, plenty of engineers, plenty of IT people, plenty of, of you know, laborers and, and like plumbers and painters and electrician and uh, mechanics. So we really want the dollar first to circulate a few times within the community. So anytime we have the ability to utilize the expertise of someone who is qualified and certified from within the community, we give that person first dibs. So Mashallah. if anybody comes to us with that, we're open. Our objective is not to just help the masajid, but our objective is to also network the community. There is mm -hmm. a brother in New Jersey, for example, he specializes in those special carpets, which is, uh, you know, when they put in the masajid, so the lines are... Oh, like the that. stuff that okay, comes it's, from it's, Turkey yeah. and stuff? Yeah, it's called Carpet City Inc. out of uh, the, nor the Northeast. So we help. You know, we let people know of such a business because instead of them going to someone that they don't know, let them mm -hmm. utilize the services provided by a Muslim brother who is trying hard to help our community, uh, and right. especially in that kind of uh, department. And that's what we're doing. So if anybody wants to come forward and say, look, I want to help with this, or maybe I'm a carpet, a national carpet wholesaler, I can sell uh -huh. the message at this price. We will hook up the brother with the masjid so we can provide this network as well, inshallah. MashaAllah, MashaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you guys and make this project a success. Ameen. Allah, ameen. Ameen. And inshallah, in the future coming um, episode and shows and interviews that we will have with you, we'll discuss more issues and more things that that's definitely a hot topic regarding this, you know, regarding the community. And it is the Islamic community here in uh, Michigan, uh, here in uh, USA, all together. Uh, alhamdulillah. Uh, we thank you very much for being with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Zakallah khair Zakallah for talking khair to for us. Having me. And uh, we'll definitely uh, love to see you again, inshallah, real inshallah. soon. Inshallah. Uh, all the information will be uh, in the description below. And uh, inshallah, uh, we'll have you uh, maybe in a couple more days. We'll have another. Uh, one of those meetings with you, inshallah. Zakhlaq khair. Inshallah. Before we leave, I would like if everybody can help this by either posting the poster on their Facebook page or sending it through uh, their WhatsApp group or maybe talking to the Imam in their masjid to give a khutbah about the unity of Muslims and stronger together and not just talk but to also help implement in this. Uh, I'm sure, uh, Brother Jazakumullah uh, khair, I look forward to seeing you again. Please keep us in your du'a. May Allah bless you and bless your family and keep you and your family safe from this and during this pandemic, inshallah, and your loved ones. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bestow his mercy upon you 
and all Amen. the Muslims, inshallah, worldwide, and to amend the hearts and bring the hearts together, inshallah. So we as Muslims can serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the creation of Allah much better and in and, and a more sincere fashion, inshallah. Jazakumullah khair. Barakallah feekum. And this is the best way of ending the show. Jazakumullah khair for tuning in, guys. And we'll see you guys next time. Bi'idhnillahi ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.